story of this episode is from Penny. Here is what Penny has to say. My parents and I visited Minster Lovell when I was in my 30s. While my parents were admiring the truly charming spot, I wandered around the ruined building on my own. A kestrel had sat 15 metres away watching me eat my lunch, so I was in a happy mood and it was a sunny late summer day. As I was approaching the corner of the main section, I had a strong feeling a man was approaching the corner from the other side. So I instinctively moved out a metre or so to avoid a collision. When I got to the corner, no one was there. But I could still feel him there. I had the impression he found the occurrence funny and had done it to give himself a laugh. I was brought up in a haunted house, so I just shrugged it off as I'd got the feeling of someone with a sense of humour. Not a nasty person. I would have liked to have seen him, though. Well, I'm not quite sure I would have liked to have seen him, Penny. And the second ghost story for this episode is from Randy. My cousin Steve was a problem child. His only aspiration in life was to become James Dean. He'd been thrown out of the army during Vietnam, which was a feat in itself. He returned home to a small town in the centre of the States. He got married, had a child, rented a small apartment above a pawn shop. He was trying to better himself and he got a job greasing dump trucks for the county. While working one day, he tripped the bed on the truck while it was up and it crashed down on his neck and beheaded him. I'll never forget how much it hurt me my first real death of a family member that I'd had to deal with. I will never forget. My Aunt Betty buried him in a blue turtleneck. I went to his funeral at Pot's funeral home. After it was all over, my Aunt Betty felt sorry for me. At that time, I was in extreme poverty. She gave me a box of Steve's clothes. In that box was the blood-soaked jacket that he'd been wearing when he'd been killed a perfect circle of crusty blood around the collar. Things started right away with steps and bumps in the night, that sort of thing. Then the album Led Zeppelin II would always end up on the turntable going round and round. One night it came on and I heard his voice in a whisper say, Randy, it scared the hell out of me. I hid under the blankets till morning. My friend Jim and his little brother, Britt, always came by in the morning to head off to school. We were sitting on the couch looking into the kitchen while I was putting on my shoes. Suddenly, in the next room on the floor, a shoebox moved three feet in front of us. Britt jumped up to capture the mouse that must be underneath it. But when he picked it up, it was a brick. We all looked around and I realised I had the jacket on. Oh, the bells are ringing out for him. Randy assures me that that is a true story. Thank you, Randy. On that rather macabre note, and with the bells ringing and a dog barking, I will leave you. Sleep tight. <laughs>